YouTube, how's it going? My name is Kevin, also known as Phoenix, and today we're going to be talking about why you should be playing Esper Reanimator. With the printing of MH2, there have been a ton of new decks that have been added to the modern format, and Esper Reanimator is no exception. This deck simply looks to put together a two card combo and reanimate very powerful creatures onto the battlefield. These creatures come in the form of Archon of Cruelty, Solitude, Grief, and even Mole Drifter. Now the first step to this strategy is going to be putting the Haymakers into the graveyard and we're going to be doing this through the use of cards like Unmarked Grave and the whole reason why we're in Esper, Faithful Mending. The second and final step is going to be simply to reanimate our creatures with cards such as Persist and Unburial Rites which of course also has flashback so you can get some more value out of it down the road. Now that I've briefly gone over what the deck is trying to do, let's look at some of the strengths of this deck. Now the obvious strength of this deck is going to be cheating out really big creatures onto the battlefield and the best creature we can be aiming for is Archon of Cruelty. Now this card is really good because it gets its triggers not only on ETB but through attacks as well. Whenever we attack or have this creature enter the battlefield it's going to cause our opponents to discard a card, sacrifice a creature or planeswalker and lose 3 life. We of course are going to gain 3 life and draw a card as well. And even though our Con of Cruelty may be the best target we can be aiming for, we also have some really good runner-ups through Solitude, which is going to keep the board clean, and Grief, which is going to look at our opponent's hand and take out anything that could disrupt our game plan. And of course, it wouldn't really be an MH2 deck if it didn't have grind potential, and that's what Mold Drifter is for. By reanimating Mold Drifter, we're going to be able to keep drawing cards over and over and refill our hand to be able to do the combo repeatedly. Not only are we reanimating really powerful creatures, but we're going to be doubling, perhaps even tripling our value with cards like Ephemerate, which can be used both offensively for more ETB value or defensively to protect them from a removal spell. And to top it all off, another great reason to go into white is we're going to be running Teferi 3, which is going to not only give us protection from counter spells against control players, but also be able to balance any aggressive threats from the aggro players as well. Now that I've touched up on some of the strengths of the deck, I also want to cover some of the weaknesses as well just in case you're looking to play against this deck or know what to watch out for when you do play it. First and foremost, this is a combo deck that is centered around the graveyard, so having your graveyard healthy is key. There are so many decks running around right now that have plenty of graveyard hate, so this is something you're going to have to keep in mind when you're playing the deck. Another weakness that I really quickly want to touch on is really only applicable if your opponent is running black, but turn 1 hand hate spells can be pretty detrimental because you only run about 8 graveyard enablers and roughly 6 reanimate spells, so just something to keep in mind that you may want to pack some ley line of sanctities. And the last weakness that I want to cover is that even though this deck has amazing ETBs, they don't outright win the game. If your opponent has the appropriate removal and you don't have the ephemerate in hand to protect the spell, sometimes you do falter a little bit and it gives your opponent enough time to take over the game. Now moving on to my final thoughts on the deck, I think the deck looks really fun to pilot and a very cool design. I know Aspiring Spike has been doing some work with this deck and it can be very effective in the right circumstances. However, with that being said, I also don't think that graveyard-centered combo decks are really in a good spot in the meta right now as so many decks are packing the either mainboard or sideboard graveyard hate. So I do think the deck is a threat and needs to be respected, otherwise it could get out of control, but just not in a great spot right now. And to give it my final score, I'm going to have to rate it a 7 out of 10 overall, but for how cool the deck is, I would say that factor gets a 9 out of 10. It looks really fun and I can't wait to play it more. But right now I'm going to have to give it a 7 out of 10 in the current metagame. But that could change in the future. As always, thank you all so much for watching. And please do leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. And let me know in the comments section what other Magic the Gathering content you would like to see. I'd love to hear from you all and I will see you all next time.